Hi everyone, thank you for joining us for what is now our 12th Pivot Artist Interview. We're excited to have Candice Quam with us today. She is a Zuni and Diné artist. I mean, um, and so thank you Candice for joining us. Good to be here. So Figured. I'm just gonna, oh, go ahead. I did it again. <laughs> no, you're fine. I always no. cut everyone off, but this is, this is fun. We're getting better at this. Um, so let me first ask, how did you first join the Pivot Show? Um, well, I think most people kind of have the same story. Dwayne kind of pulled me in. Like, at first, I like skateboards. Who would buy a skateboard? Why would I paint it and who would buy it? <laughs> it was pretty much my thought, but like, no, man, it's good. Like, people really like it. Like, uh, I guess I will. Sure, why not? And just because this is how my family dynamic works, I pulled in my cousin brother. Elroy into it like come on let's do it if I'm gonna do it you're gonna do it too and he was pretty much the same way like why would I do it why would I paint it and why who would buy it that was pretty much the big question like who would buy it and that was we kind of went back and forth but we're we well, we're only like a month apart in age and we always grew up together so we're really good at nagging each other to the point to get <laughs> to pulling each other into what we're gonna do and that's pretty much I use my power as his cousin's sister to pull him into it and drag him into this event. And so that's how we got involved into it. So the first event was at this small little tattoo parlor, um, Landis's place. So that's how we got in. It was our small reception, but the, it was really good. It was, it was like a shoulder to shoulder event. It was, it was a small place. It looked really nice and there was a lot of people and it was really good. Like it was very shocking to where I could see like, this is something we should get into and really like put all our effort into. So, and it just kind of blew up from there. It was really amazing to see the reception of it all. Like, oh, I can see how other artists can interpret their art into a skateboard. And it was amazing. And there was also a raffle there, a raffle during that time. And all these artists were putting their boards in. I was so angry I didn't buy a raffle ticket. I've never been so angry at myself. <laughs> uh, it was so cool to see what they were putting in and I'm just so mad I didn't spend the two dollars on that raffle ticket <laughs> on that chance to get a raffle or a board. So and I, I happen to know that you have sold the board because I know our former curator at the center Jeannie Braco bought one of your boards so success oh, yeah just so crazy i yeah it's just and it's fun to like paint on the board it's so different than the mm -hmm. canvas it reacts different and you have to hold it differently too because it's just so slippery it just kind of slips and kind of flies out of nowhere it's, <laughs> it's really fun so um our follow-up question has been asking all of the artists you know Dwayne and landis have their interpretation of pivot and we've been asking everyone what their interpretation of pivot, what does pivot mean to you? Uh, well, for me, it's just like a pivot in mindset because I was just so set on canvases and what I was doing and it just kind of shifted my thinking altogether, like what I was doing. And it got me to think in new and fun ways that I never could really conceive in my mind. And it got me to put all the ideas I wanted to do but never thought I had like the skill to do it and actually put it into fruition in the exact way I wanted to. And other ways I didn't expect to, but it just kind of happened like that turtle board. I kind of thought it'd be neat if I could just do it in the span of a week, but there's certain artwork that want to be done right then and there. Mm -hmm. And I got it done in the day. So <laughs> something wants to be done, it'll, it'll find a way to do it. So, but yeah, to me, it seems like a pivot in mindset and the way you think, both on the artist end and the um, like audience end too. Because most people who see boards like, I didn't know you could do that, or I didn't know that could be painted. So, and like, I wouldn't write it. And most like my answer is like, please don't. <laughs> like it's all to me, it just feels like I worked hard on it. <laughs> so, but mm -hmm. if you want to write it, that's cool too. I just, uh, I just recommend an unusual amount of resin, so. <laughs> yeah. so, but I really like how people react, like tribal members, like all sorts of people from all over seeing, like reacting to the artwork, that's what I love to see, 
And I love to see other people's work too. That's probably actually my favorite thing in the whole exhibit is seeing everybody else's work. So I think yeah. it's amazing. It's interesting how you were talking about like, you know, thinking about how to use the board as a canvas in a different way. Because when we were doing our interview with Keith Smith and then also Abel Nash, both of them were talking about how like it was a weird new format that they hadn't worked on before and like Abel talking about like well that watercolor did not stick to that board <laughs> so uh let's try again with that but it is really cool to see just the variety that's mm -hmm. in the show so. yeah just the growing pains of trying to paint on a very slippery wooden board <laughs> yeah. that was yes. interesting and just kind of First time it was frustrating, like it's so slippery, like you're really in the rhythm and then for some reason it just slips and it's like halfway across the room. So like, ah, <laughs> and yeah. it's just, it's really fun. I don't know. Yeah. I thought it was kind of fun, just silly little process of painting, so. Yeah, and I think most people when they see the boards, they're just like, oh, it's just a piece of wood. And it's like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's <was> a weird <laughs> shaped, weird material. And you guys have a challenge to work with it. Um, yeah, even so, just trying to take a picture of it is challenging because yeah. it's curved. <laughs> got all the shadows, so, everything looks weird. Um, yeah, I appreciate my work. <laughs> yeah. So like, see what I put into it, but then the part you heard Cardis on is on the curved end and it's <laughs> all sorts of stuff. For sure. Um, kind of shifting gears, how did you first get into art? Uh, I was actually, I grew up around art. My parents are artists and pretty much everyone related to me, most people I should say, have some sort of connection to art. And I grew up and my parents also are show artists, meaning they go around to shows when it was possible, <laughs> uh, to art shows. And actually my first memory is at an art show at um, Santa Fe Indian Market. That's my first memory that I ever have. So. I've always grew up around art. I think art is in my blood and my bones. So it's always been there. And I actually kind of rebelled. <laughs> I rebelled. I rebelled and I went to college for science for biology. So for a short <laughs> bit until I noticed you need a certain personality for that and I don't have it. So I have an artist personality and artist soul. So <laughs> it's when artists grabs a hold of you, it doesn't let go. So it just took me a bit to to give in. <laughs> yeah, and well, actually, my my cousin, brother Elroy, after we got out of college, he's like, "Why don't we do art?" We're like, "No, I don't want to. It's fine." Like, "No, we're gonna do art." Like, "No, I don't want to." And it kind of went back and forth, just like the skateboard thing, until I finally gave in. So that's <laughs> how we kind of <laughs> that's how I got into art was my cousin's nagging and arts ultimate hold on my life or on myself I should say. <laughs> kind of a follow-up to that that we've been asking everyone because it is a crazy time and you talked about your parents being show artists and going around and we can't do that and and just like between the pandemic and then all the social stuff um, we've been asking everyone really what art means to them right in this moment like how is art helping you through this moment and how do you think it can help people through this moment? <sighs> I think art is everything, to be honest. I always, I always think of art. It's always in the back of my mind, so, or in the front of my mind, it's always somewhere. And if you can see, there's some art behind me too. Any good Zuni has at least four or five artwork on the wall at all times or within arm's reach. So I think it's a good way to put your head in the, positive space or put it in a different space into what you're actually are to think of where you want to be or after this all ends or how you want to change yourself or even memories in the past i just think it's a really good medium to look at yourself and look how you want to be in or who you want to be so i think it's I think it's everything. <laughs> um, we've also been asking all of the pivot artists what it means to be a native artist and how that might influence your work or your take on art and all of that. Like you mentioned your family and just being 
surrounded by art your whole life and having that kind of tradition. So if you could speak more to that. Mm, well, art to me is like a family member. So mm. it's just kind of it's always been there. So it just feels like another part of my family. So and it is, it is part of my family. And it's part of it's a part of me. And it just feels very fundamental. Like, it's just in my blood and my bones. So it just it just is. It's just like I said, it's everything. It's just part of it's just a part of me. So even if I were go if I were to get another job, it's still I'm still that. So I can't get rid of it and it can't get rid of me. So <laughs> So I tried really hard in college. It didn't work out. So tried. <laughs> And I think it sort of played through the whole interview, but our last question for you, you've been asking people kind of specific personalized questions and you've talked about Elroy, your cousin. And so we, we just wanted to talk a little about Natitude Inc. And, and you two working together. You have your website's great. Your Instagram, your shared Instagram is also great. There's so much on there. You're clearly both like doing all these really cool things. And can you just tell us a bit about that partnership a little bit more? Yeah, well, like I said, we grew up together. We're only a month apart in age, which is kind of funny. When we first started out, he always say like, "Yeah, my younger cousin." Like we're only a month, we're like a month and some change. You have no right. <laughs> but <laughs> we went back and forth. Like it's only a month. No, you can say that if it's like beyond three years, you could say that. But a month <laughs> is it's not anything. <laughs> but. Yeah, we just, we grew up together and um, we're so close in age that it kind of felt natural. And we know how each other works. There's very few people that knows him better than me. And there's very few, few people who, who know me better than him. So it just felt very natural, not in the beginning because at that point we were fully formed adults, well, kind of. <laughs> and we kind of got used to doing things our own way, so getting used to another person in your own personal space and how you work naturally you butt heads and we butt heads pretty hard in the first year <laughs> uh, i always said if i ever whenever and if ever i get married i kind of know how to work with another person now <laughs> <laughs> just kind of knowing how to compromise and how to work with another person that's that's pretty hard <laughs> yeah but it's nice to know that somebody always has your back so, and, uh, and you always have somebody to bounce off your ideas and say, that's a really good idea. Like, or like that idea needs a little tweaking or like, it's just crap. <laughs> so it's good to have somebody who will give you an honest critique on whatever you're going to do. And just to even give you like an ego check, like that was really weird or whatever. So <laughs> they're really good at doing that. <laughs> Making each other humble. It's pretty good. Or hyping each other up or just saying, different things on the road, supporting each other on the road during shows. And that's obviously not everyday life. It's just good to know that you have that support and knowing that you have each other's back. Yeah, I'm sure that's huge. And it is cool because when we, we were, when I was putting together the artist feature for you, that first picture that we had is, you know, your portrait. And it, it we're so excited to talk to you and Elroy more about all of the different ways you do art with like acrylic and what did it say like fiber art textile and also food so i think yeah. that's such an interesting spectrum and like we're so excited to get our viewers to look at that page because it is more you know all of these different things that integrate together as art but also as like these traditional things passed on and the way that you guys are like reworking them it's so cool we're so excited yeah. well you know art artists especially painters Zuni's not known for painters or paintings. There's only like a handful that people can think of that's Alexia to a Doane, a Dishta. And that's only two that they really <laughs> know. <laughs> so you have to really kind of be really almost stupidly stubborn <laughs> when you first <laughs> try it out. So we have to have our hands in various different things. And that was in textiles and in food because that's what well, basically it came out of our own craving because I really want, I really yeah. wanted parched corn. <laughs> Me and him really both are craving it. And the older people in our family, like I'm too old to make it here. We'll, sh we'll 
tell you how to do it and then you can make it and so we tried it and it was really bad <laughs> 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 and we just kind <clears> of <throat> being as stubborn as we both are we kind of wanted to perfect it and so many years later just, we can eat it now <laughs> awesome. and we, yeah and our both both sides of our family were guinea pigs so they kind of each and all the village actually it's great it's just like this is not this is how i do it so i'm like oh okay and we would incorporate into our recipe so it kind of all grew into what we have now yeah like a really organic mixing of all of those things we yeah just, we just want to say thank you so much for with us today and um shout out to everyone watching this thank you for watching uh, we're so excited that we've done 12 of these so far and we can't <laughs> wait to keep going with the other half of all the artists. Um, you can follow Candace on Instagram at Res Rainbow to see more of your amazing work and also at Natachu Inc. for the collaborative project with Candace and Elroy. Um, you can follow for more pivot news at pivot underscore skateboard underscore deck underscore exhibit on Instagram. Um, follow us at the center at center SW studies FLC on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, we're doing all the social medias and we're trying to just give you guys great content of all the pivot things and some of our collections that are available for you guys to learn about more. Um, and as always, a shout out to the LPEA and our crowdfunding donors who helped support us and get pivot to Fort Lewis College at the Center Southwest Studies. So thank you, Candace. Thank, thank you. you very much. <laughs>